There it is, Amy. What do you think of it? Mm, it's beautiful. I suppose that's Boonesboro. Has to be. That's the big city in this country. The only other settlement is Harrodsburg, and all the rest is virgin country waiting for a ruler. I'm going to carve a kingdom for you, Amy, and you'll be the first lady of the land. <laughs> I don't want a kingdom, Roger. No, just a new life and a land where we can know and love the people. It's the nature of the man you married, and that's why you married me. We have friends in Boonesboro already, you'll see. What's that? Sounds like a baby. I'm sure that was a baby. No, no, no. It was a rodent of some kind. I saw it run into the bushes over there. Come on, let's go. No, but Roger, can't we make sure? Now, what would a baby be doing out here? Amy, you want to start a new life. Now, don't start it by worrying about lost babies. Come on, to Boonesboro. you can make up your mind to settle here in Boonesboro. There's been many a time when we could use a good doctor. I'd like to, but there's a certain young woman waiting for me in Harrodsburg, and this is one time the doctor doesn't want to be late. He could refuse to take you, then. So I try to find my way alone, and then there wouldn't be any doctor in Kentucky at all. Call her when you get finished with that mule, Tolliver. All right, Daniel. I'll be inside saying goodbye to Becky. Colonel Barr. You know him? Well, yes, uh, I know him. Thank you, darling. Colonel Barr, what in the Sam Hill are you doing away? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I reckon you don't remember me. Is that what you think, Tolliver? <laughs> Amy, meet Corporal George Tolliver, who took a bullet for me at Hamden Bridge. How do you do? How's the leg? Oh, that's a very valuable leg, Colonel. It always tells me when it's going to rain. <laughs> ben, come on over and get the Colonel's horses. There's somebody else could be mighty glad to see you, too. Come on, this way. You see, Amy? Friends. There you are, Daniel. One for the trail. Thank you, Cincinnatus. This is for Mrs. Clark. You know, you'll be coming back along. Do be careful. It's only about 60 miles. Two days going by pack mule. On the way back, I'll try to make it without stopping. That isn't what I mean by being careful. Come on in, Kurt. She's going to be surprised to see you. Cincinnati, look at who's here. So the old mess sergeant is still at it, eh? They just got here, all the way from Virginia. Daniel! Becky, come on over and meet Colonel Barr. You've heard me mention him hundreds of times. Hello. Colonel, this is Daniel Boone and the missus. Glad to know you, Colonel. How do you do? Mrs. Boone? Colonel Barr. You must be Mrs. Barr. I'm Amy. Oh, if you've traveled all the way from Virginia, you must be ready to drop. Well, I... Come sit down. Thank you. Daniel Boone. So you're the man who gave this place its name. 
Nope. People just started calling that because I happened to get here first. <laughs> <laughs> Cincinnati, how about a drink for the Colonel? Well, sure. Drinks for everyone. <laughs> You're too modest, Boone. Why, any man who can lay claim to several thousand square miles of wilderness deserves a monument. Well, the trouble is, claims are not being honored by the Virginia legislature. Oh, why's that? I'm not enough of a lawyer to know exactly. There you be. Drink up, gentlemen. Drink up to the Colonel's health. Your health, sir. Are you saying that all the settlers who came here on the strength of your treaty with the Cherokees are liable to lose their holdings? No, I'm not saying that. With the war going on, you can't settle anything one way or the other. Oh, I disagree. A time of war is a time when things do get settled. Why, right now, you could defy all 13 colonies, and there's nothing they could do about it. Well, none of us here are aiming to defy them. Toller, have you got that mule shot yet? Oh, I completely forgot about it. Colonel, anything you need, just let me know, huh? Then you'll be staying here? Yes. How wonderful. Well, your husband must be out of the army. Uh, yes, he was in the forefront of the fighting, and, uh, well, he's risked his life many times, but, well, there were differences of policy, and... Please, you don't have to explain a thing to me. Let me show you upstairs. Cincinnati has a nice room where he can stand till we have a cabin raising party for you. Cabin raising party? <laughs> I feel at home already, Mrs. Boone. Becky. Roger, Mrs. Boone is going to be kind enough to show me our room. Uh, I wasn't inferring that you should defy anyone, Mr. Boone. I was only saying that now's the time to take some kind of action. Push out the Cherit Keys entirely, and Virginia will have to recognize your claim. You haven't finished your drink, Colonel. <laughs> You're evading the argument, Mr. Boone. Yep. After you've lived here a while, we'll try it again. But right now, I've got to deliver a man to Harrodsburg. If Becky can be of any help to you, please call her. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you very much. Um, a drop more, Colonel? Oh, thank you. Uh, I do hope I didn't sound too presumptuous, Cincinnatus. I only wanted to say that you folks here need better protection of your claims. Well, out here in Kentucky, we sort of get out of touch with things. I tell you what, how about us putting on a party tonight for you and your wife? Done. I'll be with you in a minute, Daniel. Dan, how do you like Colonel Barr? Well, for a man who just got here, he's mighty spry with his advice on how we ought to run things. His wife's a fine woman, and she seems devoted to him. I'm glad to hear it. Cincinnati and Tolliver swear by him, too. Might be he's just in the habit of giving orders. All set, Daniel. Three days. I think I'll walk with you to the stream and then go on home. I can't understand how Daniel Boone got his reputation. He struck me as being singularly lacking in imagination and any sense of responsibility towards the people in the community. Well, he doesn't rule the place, Roger. He simply lives here. Well, someone should provide leadership. What's his wife like? Becky? Yes. Hmm. Oh, intelligent. Charming woman. I like her very much. <laughs> she thinks Daniel is the finest man on earth. <laughs> well, he's got a strong back. <laughs> Maybe that's all the people expect here in Kentucky. But I'm going to give them more than that. I'm going to organize this territory and force the Virginia legislature to recognize all of the claims, including a few thousand acres of our own. I'll build up a well-trained militia and run the Cherokees off all that fertile land to the south. This country could be autonomous, Amy, and you and I could direct it. Roger, aren't you going a little fast, taking too much into your own hands like you did when you ordered the attack at Greenwater Hill? That attack was sound, Amy. If only I'd had the backing you of the general You don't have the backing South. because you disobeyed orders. Amy, we don't like, talk darling, about Darling, I'm that. sorry. I'm sorry. And in any case, here in Kentucky, I shall be giving the orders. But, Roger, can't, can't we first take time to get to know the people? Well, of course we'll take time. They're giving us a welcoming party tonight. We'll have time to meet everyone. 
They like us, Amy. That's the way we impress people. And if I didn't seek the leadership, they'd force it on me. Now, you wouldn't expect me to run away from that, would you? No. <laughs> I'd never expect you to run away from anything. I just wish you would learn to treat people as people, not, not just men. Hmm? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Jericho and I found the little tyke, either lost or abandoned near the trail. Seems terribly weak. Aw, oh, abandoned. Israel, get some milk from the cooler. I mean, go stir up the fire and get a pot for the milk. Oh, it feels hot. Poor little thing. Why would anyone abandon a baby? I don't know. He's probably from my tribe, but I brought him here because it was so much closer. Don't apologize. Of course you brought him here. His mother may have put him down to rest and then couldn't find him again. Or perhaps she met with some accident. Well, right now, the important thing is to get some food into him. We'll find out who the mother is later. Israel, dear, here, take the baby and be careful. <laughs> Mingo, Israel's old cradle is out in the woodshed. Well, Doc, it's going to be quite a change for you. After Europe and all those big cities. Oh, I don't intend to spend all my time in Harrodsburg. Every few years, I'll have to get back to civilization. Well, that's too bad. But I want to go back. What for? Because of all that's going on. This is an exciting age, Daniel. Things are happening. All over the world, people are waking up. Mm -hmm. New inventions, new discoveries. In England, a fellow named Joseph Priestley has taken apart the very air we breathe to show what it's made of. Another man named Edward Jenner has been experimenting with ways to make people immune to diseases. In this country, Ben Franklin has pulled the lightning right out of the sky. And in France, there's a man named Mesmer who has discovered something called animal magnetism. He just waves his hands at people, and they go to sleep. And all these men know each other, write to each other. It's the most exciting age the world has ever known. Maybe I've got it. Or maybe I'm just a bore. Thank you. This is my wife, Kate. This is the Colonel. That's Mrs. Barr. It's the other way around. You always introduce her to the lady first. How beautiful she is, Corporal. How many children do you have, Mrs. Tolliver? Three. Oh, that's a lovely family. Oh, this is ridiculous standing around having everyone greet us as though we're visiting royalty. Let's dance. Yeah. Please, everyone, let's start the dance. And I'll start the pouring. <laughs> that was splendid, Amy. That young woman will be your slave for life. Well, I meant what I said. Of course, of course. You know, I think it's odd Rebecca Boone didn't come. I know Daniel's away, but I thought she'd come anyway. Maybe she thought you were too much competition. Oh, Roger. Shall we dance? <laughs> Aren't you going to the party, Ma? No, dear, I don't think so. I thought you said you liked Mrs. Barr. I do. I like her very much. And I'm sure she'll understand. Well, I can take care of the baby. It's been quiet for quite a while now. 
Too quiet. What's the matter, Ma? Oh, he's burning up. That's why he's been so quiet. A high fever. Mima, go get Mingo. He said he'd be near. What you gonna do, Ma? I don't know. I thought he was sick from hunger and exposure. But he won't eat and he keeps getting hotter. And I want you to go to bed, young man. Oh, Ma! No argument. Scoot! Yes, Rebecca? The baby's worse. Mingo, Cincinnati has a whole shelf full of medicines. Well, tell me what you need. I'll go get it. I don't know what I need. I don't even know what Cincinnati has or what it's for. Well, then I'll go get Cincinnati too. No. No, we'll take the baby there. It'll be much faster, and maybe some of the other women will know what to do. Mama, hand me that blanket. I've got to keep him warm. <laughs> You're here. I'd almost given you up. I'm sorry, Amy. I couldn't come because of the baby. The baby? Well, I didn't know you had such a young one. Oh, it's not mine. It's an Indian baby. Mingo found him, abandoned near the trail. By the trail to Boonesboro? Yes. And he's sick. Cincinnati, do you have anything you think could help him? Well, now let's just take a look at the little fellow. Is something wrong? Broken out in a rash just since we left home. A rash? Stand back, Amy. The rest of you keep your distance. This baby has smallpox. Becky, I ain't got anything any good for smallpox. Nothing's any good. Mrs. Boone, I can't understand you're bringing that child here. I didn't know, Colonel Barr. Well, you know now. And the only decent thing you can do is to get that baby out of here and take the Indian with you. Would you please? I'm sorry, Amy, but this woman is jeopardizing the lives of the entire community. Somebody had to tell her to go. I'm going, Colonel Barr. I'm going. Mingo? It had to be done, eh? But did you have to do it so rudely? I had to be understood. Oh, Roger. Now, please go to your room until you can control yourself. There's a lot more to be done. Now, could I have everyone's attention? Smallpox is an extremely contagious disease with a high mortality rate. Even those who recover from it are marred for life. Now, did any one of you actually come into physical contact with that baby? How about you, Cincinnati? No, sir, I didn't. I come close, but I didn't touch it. Good. Then if we act wisely, we may still be able to isolate the disease and keep it from spreading. But first, we must give someone the authority to act. Someone that you can trust and obey. Any nominations? If Daniel was only here. Daniel? How's Daniel going to isolate the disease when it's right there in his own house? Be mighty hard for him. Why don't you take charge, Colonel? I've served under you before, and I can tell every man and woman in Boonesboro there's no final officer alive. I second that nomination. In fact, I'll second anything Cincinnati says about it. Tell us what to do, Colonel. Uh, uh, just a moment. The man you elect must have unquestioned obedience. Now, I'm new here, a stranger to most of you, uh, so there must be someone else that you'd like to nominate. Well, let's make it unanimous for Colonel Barr. Come on, all in favor, show your hands. Show your hands. Yeah. 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 
I thank you for the trust that you've shown in me, and all I ask in return is that you give me proof that I can trust you. Now, the first order is going to be the hardest of all to obey, because I know that all of you think of the Boons as your friends, but they must remain isolated. Until the danger of an epidemic is past and the Boons' cabin burnt to the ground, there can be no contact. Burn the Boone cabin? I reckon so, if that's what it takes. I hope that no one tries to disobey this order, but to enforce it, we'll post a watch. And if anyone should succeed in breaking it, that person will have to endure the same isolation. Now, is that clear? But, Colonel, Becky Boone has got her own kids as well as a sick baby. How is she going to eat? I think that Indian Mingo will be able to provide for her, but in any case, her husband will be back in a few days. I see no problem. Now, Cincinnatus and you, Corporal Tolliver, come with me. The rest of you are dismissed. Rebecca, there's only one thing to do. I have to go after Daniel and the doctor and bring them back. You can't. I'm all alone, and something has to be done about Israel and Mima. I can't send them to stay with anyone. They've been in contact with a baby. I'm afraid we all have. Maybe it's a matter of degree. Perhaps if we get them out of the house now... I don't know anything about disease. What causes it, how it spreads. I don't know what to do. Rebecca. Let me go into the cabin first and get Israel and Jemima. We'll move into Israel's lean too, and we'll manage to keep warm at night. And they don't mind campfire cooking. Hmm? All right, Mingo. Please hurry. right over that hill is Harrisburg, so you can make the rest of the way alone. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this, Daniel. I only wish you could stay for my wedding. I, uh, I'm kind of worried about this Colonel Barr. If he's a soldier Cincinnati's always said he was, I can't figure out why he resigned his commission and... I thought you knew. No. Do you? Everyone in the East knows. He was court-martialed and cashiered. Nothing criminal. He was a fine commander when it came to giving orders, but he couldn't take them. Tried to fight the war on a personal basis. He got away with it as long as he won victories. But the last time he attacked when he was ordered to retreat, he left two-thirds of his men dead on the battlefield and wrecked the whole summer's campaign. Well, I reckon he just wants to start a new life before he isn't so well known. Good luck, Doc. <laughs> Wood, Israel. You'll have the pot boiling over. How's the baby? Not much better, Israel. What do those men want? I don't know. That's close enough, Mingo. Stop right where you are. What's this all about? I'm here just to make sure no one leaves and no one comes a calling. Matter since Natter's expecting an Indian attack? Well, they ain't exactly attacking us. Well, unbar the gate and let me in. You been home yet? No. 
What's that got to do with it? Let me in. Well, I reckon it'll be all right. Now, why wouldn't it be all right? All right, men. Let's go through it once again with empty rifles. On the command, the first line fires. Then you drop to your knees to reload. What's the meaning of this, Cincinnatus? The boons are in quarantine. The Colonel Daniel ain't been home yet. He ain't even been near the baby. Baby? What baby? So he can't be contagious. Contagious? Will somebody tell me what's going on? Yes, I'll tell you, and it isn't pleasant. While you were away, your wife took in an Indian child. The child has smallpox. We had to isolate her in your cabin to prevent spread of the disease. You mean you've left my wife alone in the cabin with a sick baby for three days? By whose orders? By my orders. Well, since when did you start giving orders? Since I was asked to do so by the unanimous insistence of the people who live here. That's true, Daniel. We had to have somebody who knew what to do, so we elected Colonel Barr. Well, what are you drilling for? You aim to fight smallpox with rifle balls? No, but we intend to wipe out its source. If there's smallpox among the Indians, they'll have to go. Now, we have a treaty with the Cherokee. It's your treaty, Mr. Boone, not mine. You folks all live under that treaty. You aiming on breaking it? It's the smallpox, Daniel. Colonel said it was the only way, so we all swore to obey him. I see. Now, just a minute, Boone. Where are you going? Well, where do you think I'm going? I'm going to my wife. Then I must warn you that you too will be quarantined and you will not be allowed to enter this post. Mr. Barr, your election wasn't quite unanimous. I didn't vote for you. Coming through, Tolliver. Now, Daniel, don't make me have to. Daniel! Becky. Dan. Oh, Dan. Well, you shouldn't be here. I've heard. Where's the baby? It's dead. Maybe. About an hour ago. Becky. Dan, I feel sick. Doctor, but Colonel Barr has the house under guard and there was no one to look after Rebecca and the children. But now that you're here, I can go. It'll be dark enough in a few minutes that you can get away. I made the trip in 12 hours, but I don't think the doc can make it that fast. I figured it'd be more like 30. I'll be all right, Dan. I will. Now, shoot, Mingo. No, Rebecca, I'm going. Not only for you, but for my own people as well. But there's nothing a doctor can do. Cincinnati said so. Dr. Jedrick, you've been studying in Europe. And I don't know whether I dreamed it, but it seemed to me like I remember him saying that there's a new way of fighting these things. What's wrong, Ma? Israel, no. You mean Ma's got it too? We don't know yet. But you're gonna have to stay away from your Ma until the doctor tells us. Come on. The baby's dead. Now Ma's got it. 
She might die, too. Israel, don't say that. Don't even think it. It's true. And if she dies, Mingo killed her. Israel. It's true. It's all his fault. Come on. I hate you. And if my mom dies, I'll kill you. And we know you're worried, son. We all are. But if anybody's at fault, it's Mr. Barr. He should have used his authority to send for a doctor instead of making you a prisoner in your own home. Now, you go on with your sister to lean to, and don't worry. He's right, of course. I, I brought the baby here. Nobody who called himself a man would do any different, Mingo. Talking about Mr. Barr, it just gave me an idea. He's got two horses, one for you and one for the doctor. That cut your travel time in half. You mean you're going to ask him for them? No, if he turned me down, I wouldn't get them for sure. For once in my life, I'm going to borrow something without asking. Open up the gate! We're going to tell her! Where's the colonel? I gotta report what's happened. Just went upstairs. I'm right here, Corporal. Now then, what's happened? He's gone. In the night. Who's so gone? Yeah, calm down, man. Yes, sir. Mingo, the Indian, stole your horses and, and got clean away. He stole my horses? Yes, well, I, I couldn't see in the dark. And, and he waited till Boone come home. Then he took off. You bet he did, because Boone told him we were planning an attack against the Cherokees. Yeah. That's where he went to warn them. When did you find out that he left? Well, uh, this morning when they buried the baby. The baby's dead? Yes. Miss Boone, she got the pox. Maybe the kids, too. Then it's spreading, and Mingo make it spread farther. We've got to act fast. Get word out to the outlying cabins. I want everyone assembled here within an hour. Yes, and, and I'm sorry about them horses. I'll get them back. Now get going. But first, I'm going to take care of Boone. A traitor to his people. is dead. Yes, I heard. In fact, I heard everything. It's the first death of what may be many. You see, I was right. Roger, you know what baby that was, don't you? It was just an Indian baby. It was the same baby that cried out to us on the trail the day we got here. You're imagining things. Roger, I heard that baby. And I know now that you even saw it. Well, that's why you took me away so quickly. That's why you made up that silly lie about a rodent. Because you knew I would have taken it. Yes, that's exactly what you would have done, and I had to prevent it. And thank heaven I did, or it would be you and not Mrs. Boone who had the pox. No, no, that is not why you did it. Oh, no. You simply didn't want to be bothered with an infant, so you left it there to die, and you've made me feel like some sort of a monster. Ridiculous, Amy. And you're going to use the whole thing as an excuse to drive away the boon so you can have control of Boone's barrel. That's not true. I didn't create this situation. I didn't ask to be put in command. And I certainly didn't betray our plans to the Indians. Roger, you have no right to attack them. It isn't a question of right. It's a matter of necessity to save our lives. Not my life. Yours. And I want to tell you something right now. I want nothing from this. Whatever you gain out of it, I want nothing. Absolutely nothing. But you will. Because it'll all be yours. Boone betrayed 
our plans to the Indians, I don't know. I do know that it is outright treachery. But we still have the advantage of your training and my military experience, and if we act swiftly, we can still accomplish our ends. But first, in order to ensure that there's no further betrayal, we're going to run the Boones out of the country and burn his cabin in order to get rid of the pestilence. For a man who deserves hanging, that's leniency. I'll take care of that with a few volunteers. Step forward. Cincinnatus, I thought anybody who served under me before would volunteer. I know we got to protect ourselves, and I know we promised to do what you said. But I still think we ought to hear Daniel's side of it before we just run him out of the country. You know his side of it. He made a treaty with the Cherokees. He thinks more of them than he does of you. Colonel Barr, he's coming. Dan Boone. All right, Cincinnati, you're about to hear Boone's side of it. But in view of the way he betrayed us, not to mention a little horse stealing, I warn you against believing a word he says. Stop right there, Boone. I wasn't planning on coming in. I just came to tell you why we had to borrow your horses. I know why you stole my horses. So that Indian friend of yours could warn the Cherokees that we were coming. That's not true. Mingo went to Harrodsburg to bring back Dr. Jedricks. If you had any feeling for those folks inside, you'd have sent someone three days ago. It's a fine story, but I don't believe it. There's no cure for smallpox. You can only wipe out the source. Mingo left early last night. Those horses of yours hold out, they ought to be getting in before long. Then we better wait, hadn't we, Colonel? If Mingo does bring the doc back, then we'll know Daniel's telling the truth. He's stalling to give his Indian friends more time. Is that all you've got to say? No, I want some quinine for my wife till the doctor gets here. If you're afraid I'll contaminate you, drop it over the wall. You won't need it, Boone. You and your family are leaving. We're burning you out. Well, we might as well take you along with us. Go and disarm him. Well, I'm contagious, remember? Suppose you come and disarm me. Stay where you are, Boone. Now, you stay where you are. Old Tick Licker here is a sight more accurate than that double-barrel dueling tool of yours. Go out and get it. Hold it. Don't anybody open that gate. Can you hear me? I'm telling you the truth. The doctor will be here soon, and I aim to be around when he gets here. I'm not feeling too friendly towards some of you folks. Don't anybody make a wrong move, or Mr. Barr is going to get hurt. Now, Cincinnati, get me that quinine. Stay where you are, Cincinnati. He bluffing. Don't try me, Barr. I'm going to count to three. One. You'd hang for murder. Two. This is your last chance. All right, get the quinine. Now you stay right where you are till he brings it. I'll feel a lot better that way. I understand now, Boone. You're only waiting for your Indian friends to help you. Down! Pune, why are you here? We come for help. Our people burn with a white man's disease. Maybe white man has cure. Maybe, but not just now. Listen, Cornab, there's trouble here. My eyes can see. Your tribe is in danger, not only from the disease, but from some of the settlers in the fort. Move your people into hiding. Keep them there. Keep watch. When the trouble ends, then come. Now, we move 
first. Boone's cabin and then the Indians. I don't see but two engines out there, Colonel. Daniel must be telling the truth. Are you obeying orders or not? Well, I ain't gonna burn out Daniel. I can't. Then stay here. I want no one but men that I can trust. If you fit that description, follow me. you? No, Becky, it's me, Amy. Amy, you shouldn't be here. It's dangerous. I'll never forgive myself for not coming sooner. Now, you just relax and save your strength. I'm going to take care of you. stay outside. Go to the cabin. Inside. Inside? You mean Ma's all right? All I mean is it's apt to be more dangerous outside. Now go on, hurry. He didn't say what it was. She just said it was worse outside than it was in. I'm going out there. Becky, no, no, you can't. That's right, sir. I'll give him one last chance to take his family and leave. If he doesn't, we'll set it on fire and drive him out. Can you hear me, Boone? All right, Bar. This is as far as you're gonna go. Now, don't try to stop us, Boone. We are burning your cabin to destroy the contagion. Doc Jedrick, Daniel was telling the truth. What of it? A quack doctor with a lot of fake remedies. I brought the doctor as quickly as I could, Daniel. I'm in charge here. I didn't send for you, and I don't need you. I'm asking you for time to make a complete examination. There is no time. We're running the boons and everyone in that cabin out of the country. Then I suppose I'll tell you goodbye, Roger. Amy. Don't come any closer. I'm contagious. I've been trying to help out Mrs. Boone. But I don't understand. Why? Rebecca took in an infant that should have been my responsibility. Now, whatever happens to her should happen to me. But that wasn't your responsibility. You didn't even know. You did. I'm your wife, Roger. Your responsibilities are mine. Amy, but to risk your life... How else could I make you understand? We came here for a new beginning among people who would accept us as friends. But instead, you brought the old life with you. Nothing has changed, just the setting. Well, I can't live that way any longer. So I'll have to leave the country since you've asked me to. No, Amy, I never meant that. Don't, Roger. You're just endangering your own life. It's your life I'm thinking of. Well, there are others besides mine. Can't you think of them, too? Dr. Jedrick. Let me see the patient. The symptoms of smallpox rarely appear in less than 10 days after contact with an infected person. But that's a blessing. 
It means we still have time to inoculate her against the disease, but we need a proper donor, someone who has an extremely light case. You mean give her the disease? Yes, but so lightly she'll not even be ill, and afterwards she'll be immune. Can you do the same for Amy? I think it would be wise to inoculate everyone who has been exposed. But we need a proper donor. When did she get sick? Night of full moon. Full moon. Eight days ago. She'll be all right. Much more than all right. Gentlemen, this little Indian baby is going to save us all. That's all. Next. Forgive me. Well, how does it feel? Did it hurt very much? No, not as much as something else does. What is that? Something I said to Mingo last night. Well, when a man realizes he's done another man wrong, there's only one thing to do. And sometimes it takes a brave man to do it. How are you feeling, Israel? I'm not feeling too good because of what I said to you last night. Can you forgive me, Mingo? <laughs> Mr. Boone, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't accept my apology. But please believe me. I'm sorry. Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man, with an eye like an eagle and as small as a mountain was he. Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man. He was brave, he was fearless, and as tough as a mighty old tree. From the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his rawhide shoe. The riffinest, roarinest, fightinest man the frontier ever knew. Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man. With an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he. Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man. What a boom, what a doer, what a dream.